Minutes ago, just minutes ago, we have two reports of state of emergency declarations. And the first one coming out of California and the other one out of, I think it's Missouri. And let me see if I get this pulled up here. For some reason, this one doesn't want to, the Bay Area one doesn't want to pull up. But let's see here. We got calls for for Oakland mayor to declare a state of emer emergency. And this is in response to, I believe, a, a police officer being unalived, basically. Something wrong with my computer. But uh, nonetheless, this is a growing problem. And sorry, guys, bear with me here. Maybe I'm losing my Internet connection here or something. There it is. We've got the Internet. And can we get into it? There we go. Calls for Oakland mayor to declare a state of emergency. This is the strangest position I have to be in to use my computer here. But I'm still trying to get my Wi-Fi signal. So it says that even with arrests having been made in connection with the killing of an Oakland police officer, one city leader is calling on the mayor to declare a state of emergency. Councilman Noel Gallo, the one proposing the state of emergency, says it would give Mayor Xing Tao the ability to move forward in choosing a new police chief. Thou fired the former police chief, Larone Armstrong, last February, and the city's been without a permanent leader ever since. That doesn't sound like a really good idea to have a police force without a police chief. Uh, I guess whatever that person did, you know, required them being fired abruptly and immediately. But uh, to go, I don't know, almost an entire year without a police chief to replace them says a lot says a lot about all parties involved here. Gallo will meet with Thao on Wednesday to push her to make, okay, that's today, good on her threat to declare the state of emergency over the Oakland Police Commission's delays in delivering her a, a slate of candidates from which to choose as police chief. Without the state of emergency in place, the process plays out. That gives the commission until March to get the mayor a new list of finalists, and she rejected the last one. And it's been a difficult year for the people of Oakland. Robberies went up 38%. There were 32% more burglaries and 44% increase in motor vehicle thefts. And 126 people were killed in the city. And uh, the robberies and burglaries going up make, you know, they make, they make sense considering the state of the economy and people's personal finances and struggles that they are dealing with, as well as living in California and their lax policy on breaking these laws. 44% increase in motor vehicle thefts. Uh, vehicles are expensive and people want to steal them, unfortunately. And now they have new technology that makes it easier to do that. So, yeah, uh, you, you, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. Uh, one of them was uh, the deaths in the city of this 126 people was the Oakland police officer Tuan Lee, who was shot and killed last Friday while working an undercover burglary operation. And if someone has the audacity to attack a, an Oakland police officer, they're attacking every resident of Oakland. According to the Oakland Police Officers Association President Barry Donnellan, I, I think these criminals, I think these deranged individuals are so brazen now. They don't care who you are. I mean, we've even had stories and instances of, of people um, inflicting harm on their own family and siblings and children and grandchildren. grandchildren. So, it, it, honestly, these folks, they do not care. As Lay's family and the city mourn the loss of the 36-year-old officer, OPD and other law enforcement officers poured over video, electronic, and physical evidence from the scene, they later arrested suspects in San Francisco, Livermore, and Sacramento. And the arrests happened within 100 hours of Lee's killing along the 400 block of Embarcadero. But as we move on to another growing problem, state of emergency declared 
for domestic violence cases on the rise. Domestic violence cases need urgent act attention in the St. Louis metro, according to Diamond Diva Empowerment Organization. And the group is dedicated to educating, strengthening and empowering women and children affected by domestic violence. And on these topics and conversations, there will be no video footage, no B-roll, no showing you of anything because I've already been contacted by YouTube on numerous occasions as we are having these discussions, rational discussions for educational purposes to help better prepare and inform and educate the masses. YouTube is not about that life. So I have to even, I can't show you anything, but I even have to be very careful about the words that I choose to use. Uh, so bear with me if I censor myself in my speech or speak in code or whatever. We have declared a state of emergency. There is actually help out here, which is something that most of the time they don't know. In the last two weeks, First Alert 4 has reported on a few domestic violence cases. And Tuesday, St. Louis County prosecutors charged uh, er Irasima Scott, 46, with first degree domestic assault. And police say she shot her boyfriend in the chest Monday after an argument. I don't ever want to be in a relationship that could require that would lend to the possibility of the other half shooting me in the chest because we had a disagreement. That seems extreme, okay? Uh, it says here that Love said women are also abusing men, although we don't see it as much. Now, on a month's average, we may get in three applications of men when before we didn't get any. A little bit unrelated, but it still has a lot to do with people's mental health and the state of their mental health or lack thereof, or challenges that they may face with mental health. I don't hear a lot about this in regard, like normally they're gonna bring women, in, stories from women and children being victims, not so much men, where they say that men are being abused also. Um, maybe, maybe it doesn't happen as much, or maybe the men don't wanna report it as often, but I always wondered about that and how the media wants to deliver this uh, narrative. And you rarely, rarely hear about trans men. I don't know why. It's always trans women. I don't get it. But it says that uh, in June and July of 2023, Love said Diamond Diva received about 50 applications for services. In November and December, there were 80 to 90. And last week, a woman and her son rushed to a North City home after police said her ex-boyfriend held them against their will. We've been dealing with this for so long. Now it's just publicized differently. Okay, that's what I was thinking. And I have filed cases that didn't make the news of several clients that had their homes shot at, their children, their cars. So the news, the mainstream, social media even, because they're in, they're in cahoots, they're being controlled, strings are being pulled behind the scenes. They're not going to show you and tell you everything, okay? And what they do show you and tell you is strategic and for a reason. There's a purpose. There's an agenda. Uh, Markeisha Williams and her case gripped the minds of so many across the St. Louis metro. In December, First Alert 4 followed the family as they searched through North St. Louis. Days later, Williams' ex confessed to killing the 29-year-old mom of four, while the full details of these recent domestic violence cases aren't yet known, Love points to a stat revealing women return to their abusers seven times before they leave. Now, we, Michelle and I, we talked about this before in another video about that domestic violence and how people would hide it and how now there's a push by the government for there to be training for folks who find themselves like hairdressers in a situation to more than likely be privy to this information to understand identify and then aid and help but it also still comes down to the victim too from the standpoint of you got to get out you got to get away and you got to get help and you can't go back now granted it's easier said than done i get it but i also think that this is part of the reasoning behind why this is happening is because of the intense challenges that people face that usually come back to some way, shape or form personal finance. OK, 
And people joke, and they're like, Kevin, you can find a way to make any conversation relate back to personal finance. But if you think about the struggles and the challenges that people face, oftentimes uh, one of the heaviest burdens and greatest causes of stress is the financial component and the impact and the challenges that people face today that are much harder than they've ever been before as a result of the last four years, theoretically, three to four years, theoretically, have gotten really, really bad, okay? And uh, it only, it seems like they're only going to get worse. And uh, this is essentially, effectively, the great wealth transfer, the great reset. Everybody talked about the great reset last year, but I think the great reset is actually more of a great wealth transfer. And that reset doesn't require a massive depopulation effort, but by way of the financial impacts and every other negative that will come from it and the strife and turmoil and conflict, the division, the fighting, the battles, the wars that we create amongst ourselves will effectively produce less Uh, changes in laws and legislation across different states, less. the ability to change your body in certain ways, less people, because they they can't reproduce. Uh, Michelle sent me a video. She goes, "If you send, if you're on a stranded, a deserted island, a deserted island, with a hundred women and ten men, which if you think about the ratio here, it's going to be quite a party for those ten men, but." A hundred women and 10 men, they said in a hundred years, you would have a thriving community, a thriving uh, society of men, women, children, girls and boys. And effectively, that's how we continue on, continuation of the species, which I've talked about before and some people kind of wanted to argue with me about it, but the continuation of the species can only be done in one way. And if you really want to get critical and bring science into it, which I know is a touchy subject for some people, they're probably not listening to what I'm saying. They're going to mishear what I'm saying. They're going to they're going to input whatever words they want to put into my mouth and manipulate my words and my thoughts or whatever, Um, which is fine. I'm used to it. I don't really care. Somebody try to get on me about uh leave the world behind and the Obamas and my thoughts on Barack Obama and different things that I've said in other videos and live streams. And I get it. You're, you're, you're right. I get it. You're right. You do not listen, nor do you pay attention to half the things that are being said. So you're right. Uh, (laughs) whatever you want to believe you're right. I'm not going to sit here and try to argue with you, banging my head against the wall. That, that would be the definition of insanity. But if you really wanted to bring science into it, Uh, and you weren't on this deserted island, well, the only person or people or individuals that could theoretically continue a species would be a woman or women by way of science and uh, the ability to have uh, stored DNA of the male to impregnate said woman, women, and continue on with science but you can't do that with men because men aren't capable of actually conceiving a child and therein lies the problem whereas if you're on a deserted island and you've got in contrast 10 men and 10 or or 10 men and and 100 trans women then in a hundred years time you would find yourself with a deserted island full of the bones of 110 men. Yeah. So this is just a part, a piece of the whole in this great reset and their thoughts and discussions and talks and theories. And if you watch leave the world behind and some of these things are starting to, tr- to trigger and click and make sense, uh, regardless of your thoughts and opinions on Barack and Michelle Obama or Netflix or whatever, I don't really care. I think Julia Roberts <laughs> did an amazing job in that movie. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, they can, they can execute 
and accomplish their goals and tasks, one of which being depopulation, one of which being a, uh, a de-dollarization, a destruction of the dollar, uh, simply and easily with the push of a button, with, you know, social media, with technology, with, you know, AI. I don't know if you guys can see that. Most of this is AI. Most of these people aren't real. Uh, and, um, all they have to do is literally plant a seed and the rest is done and it's already underway. It, it is actually. And I, you know, I hate to say it, I hate to be so grim, but I have to be real. I have to be a realist. I have to be, I, I, I don't live in a fantasy world. You know, this is legit. This is why I say I try to sit here and talk to you guys and have conversations about real stuff because this is how I feel. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Odds are probably not. But at the end of the day, uh, the financial component can have a lot to do. For instance, theoretically, uh, if you want to see a society collapse, the easiest way to do it would actually be to mess with their money rather than to mess with their water or mess with uh, or, or try to infiltrate and insert sleeper cells and you know whatever terrorists the easiest way to do it would be to mess with their money and then the people in that society would literally kill kill each other because of that it wouldn't happen like plain as day but give it time and they would literally just destroy one another from the simple uh position of you gotta think about it think about all the events we saw happen in 2023 with the banks okay so if your bank collapsed, if your bank crashed, if your bank failed and you couldn't access your money, who are you upset with? You're upset with the bank. You're upset with the Fed. You're upset with FDIC. You're upset with the Treasury and Janet Yellen. You're upset with the president, Joe Biden. You're upset with all these people. But what if the bank failed? What if the bank collapsed? What if the bank crashed? What if you couldn't access your money because of a cyber attack, a ransomware attack, a breach that occurred somewhere around the globe somewhere randomly by some guy in you know some bunker somewhere and you don't even know who he is. But because he infiltrated this bank and rendered your account useless and wiped you out clean, and now you're dead broke. You got nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. Your immediate anger is going to be turned towards those that you have seen before and have the most immediate and uh, access to, even though it's not their fault, even though they didn't do it, even though they're going to more than likely be the ones that are going to help you recover the, the fastest and easiest and best way possible. But if you want to destroy a society, you can be that little guy in the middle of nowhere with a laptop sitting in a bunker somewhere using uh, Elon Musk's Starlink to gain access to the Internet, to connect to these banks, to infiltrate and drop in your virus and your malware and your ransomware. And then just sit back and watch everyone else go after everyone else and everybody else's throats, even though none of them have anything to do with it. People will get upset at the teller at the window that just started. Could be their first day on the job, but it's their fault. Makes you think. It really does. Sometimes you don't want to think about this stuff because it really ruins your day, but uh, I don't think that we should necessarily ignore it and pretend like it ain't happening, okay? Either way, thank you guys for sitting here listening to me yap yet again. Hope you guys have a great day. See you soon.